higher education for the last nine years or so has been working under this great banner of areas known as student engagement. Um, that's started off with me being involved as a student rep myself. So similar to yourselves being involved as a student academic representatives. Um, and I actually sat on probably, I think I counted once that I actually sat on something like um, 600 um, university committees to represent my fellow students during my time. Um, so when I was a student, I was a class rep myself for archaeology. I then ran to be a student union officer. So I was a vice president of education for two years. And during that time, similar to Kevin and other colleagues present, I was sat on several um, national committees. So I was involved in some student representation in government as well. But now I find my time at the University of Winchester. Um, I line manage the supporting staff related to the careers service, um, student experience, extracurricular activities, volunteering and placements. And we do we've done lots of really good fun work at Winchester. But I'm also the programme leader for our MA PG Cert student engagement in higher education, which is a course all about this fantastic area of university and college business. That is, how do we support our students to succeed? How do we ensure we are listening to students' voices? And how do we work with our students in partners as opposed to customers? to enhance higher education. And I'm gonna talk mainly about student voice with you today, and it's great to be here for this event. So we'll go to the next slide if that's okay. Um, and we can skip, go, so we can click twice now, because we've done our introductions, everybody, so we know why you're here. So if you just click until this slide is full, if that's okay. So there's a lot of debate going on in student engagement in higher education. It's a great banner of activity. And really, I refer to it as the area of focus about exploring our students' experiences with our students. Now, there's lots of reasons why we want to look at student engagement in higher education. Why do we want to make sure that universities aren't passive, um, boring hierarchical organizations where we as students feel quite oppressed. Um, we actually want universities to be fantastic communities where we get those life-changing memories. So we're asked to look at student engagement. Um, we have lots of push factors on us as universities. And in the Irish context, I've done some research and of course you have a fantastic body now, which is NSTEP, which pushes you for good reasons to engage with the student voice. But also Ireland, just like every other nation in the Western world. We have a great focus put upon our university and college systems related to outcomes. So there has to be some form of benefit to going to university, normally through graduate jobs, um, or value for money and accountability. But there's also lots of reasons why we want to, as student union staff members, student union officers and student reps, want to start looking at student engagement in higher education. And that's not because we care about value for money, maybe we do a bit, but also we care about enhancement. We care about education being better. We care about our students and our fellow students having a sense of belonging. We care about people learning. That's what higher education should be about. And we care about transforming lives and ensuring that transformative higher education is accessible to our wonderful diverse students, whether they're from a traditional background where their parents and grandparents went to university, or if they're from um, a non-traditional background uh, and they're trying to access higher education, they should be able to succeed and all of our students should be able to succeed in higher education. So we'll go on to the next slide um, too. And we're at this great crossroads for higher education because higher education around the world is being marketized. Um, this started in the United States as early as the 70s. It's big time here in the UK, and it's coming across the whole of Western Europe, where universities have a real choice about how we should see our students and work with our students. And perhaps there's one option that some would like us to follow, which is to see our students as customers, to see our students as consumers, see our students as, well, we're paying for this education or we're giving our time for this education. Therefore, we should get an excellent service. But actually, that's not empowering for anybody. Nobody wins in that scenario, even though your fellow students may say to you, well, I'm paying for this or I'm spending my time doing this. It's not good enough. Let's complain. Actually, that leads us to a position where we're more like customers. And actually customers aren't that empowered to have a say. If you go out for a meal, you don't really have a say in your meal, you order something. And if you don't like it, all you can do is complain at the end. Do we want to have a higher education where we turn up and all we can do is complain at the end? 
actually, no, I think there's an alternative in this crossroads take student engagement approaches to emphasize that we are a community of yes, staff and students, but a community of learners and the university and the college is a place of learning, is a place of producing knowledge. So we want our students to be engaged in decision making. We want to welcome our students to be on our decision making panels, to be involved in the um, enhancement of our courses. And also we want to empower staff to say, actually, go and speak to students. We want to give our staff time to do that. So we'll go to the next slide as well, please. So I see there's two directions and obviously I'm going to be talking about the latter. And today's event is all about student voice in education. And sometimes we feel like we're banging on a closed door when we're trying to give our voice with education. And it's important to know that student voice is not a new thing. It's not a new thing. Um, NSTEP's done a lot of fantastic reports in the last decade, but st students having a say in their education is not a new idea. Um, actually, the UN and UNESCO have talked about students should have a right to say in their education pre-18. Um, a group of universities came together in 2001 and um, at the Prague um, comment out, they said, well, actually, we need to start seeing our students as key partners in the quality assurance of higher education across the whole of Europe. But also maybe for any of you that are studying education studies or philosophy, you'll, you'll know that Dewey as early as 1916 was saying that students should have a say in their education. And for anyone that's studying primary education or education studies, you'll know there's lots of literature and lots of work out there around student voice in other levels of education. So pre-university and college education. And some of you in your primary education in your schooling times when you were a child will have been involved in student voice councils and student voice committees. So the whole idea of student voice in education is not a new one at all. And we'll go to the next slide if that's okay. And really, when you look at student voice, you can split it in two ways. And Colin Bryson says this, that you can really see student voice activity can be either you as a student rep or a student engaging with the staff member or other students. So that's you being proactive, you saying, I will volunteer to be a student rep or you saying, I'll feed in that, I'll feedback on how that went. Um, or you asking your students, what, what do you think? What, what do you think to what's going on um, at the moment? And it's crucially important in the time of global pandemic because our higher education is incredibly disturbed. There's also another type of student voice and that's us as universities. And I say us to everything because I don't really consider myself to be a student or a staff. I'm still studying, but I'm a staff member, but I, you know, I don't wed myself to either party. And there's also us as staff members though, proactively engaging with students, going out there and trying to listen to students deploying methods to engage with the student voice. And it's all fantastic, but you need both parties to be involved really. And I'm gonna speak more about that in a moment. So we'll nip to the next slide if that's okay, Oshin. So what counts as student voice? Well, here's a load of things on the screen that in my view count as student voice. Um, student voice is really basic. Um, sometimes we put it on a pedestal in our student unions and say, well, it's only the SU president or it's only the faculty rep. But actually, let's, I'm going to level with you a little bit here. And actually, the most basic form of student voice is just somebody putting their hand up and saying, excuse me, I didn't understand that point. Can you say that again? That is student feedback in its most basic form. What's another basic form of student voice? It's just a staff member speaking to a student or a student speaking to a staff member at the end of a session saying, really, really enjoyed that session. Loved how you spoke about that. However, I do not understand what you were talking about in the last 15 minutes. Can we speak a bit further? That's a form of student voice or, or a student emailing a staff member. I've got the Outlook logo there saying the students are really concerned about the deadline. Can we talk about maybe moving it? There's other types of student voice that maybe we're here to talk about today. Student reps. And I coordinated a rep scheme for two years myself and did all the admin. I had no student rep staffing at Winchester. And I know that that role and how important the great foundation of student voice student representatives are. It's our student unions as organized student associations who represent student voices en masse across organizations. And it's also complaining. Now, universities don't often say this and colleges don't say this, and sometimes we don't say this, but actually making a complaint is a form of student voice as well, because you're writing down your feedback. But sometimes complaints come at the end or in extremes, so we don't include them. But it's really important that we include complaints in the student voice picture as well. And we'll go to the next slide as well. Oh, and of course, student surveys and you have your own engagement survey. 
What also counts as student voice, and often universities will not want to speak about this kind of student voice, is protesting, activism. Um, when I worked in the SU, there was only one time we almost pressed the red button and organized a great protest. Um, and that was related to actually um, students being missold university housing and ending up in hotels. Uh, but student protest is absolutely a form of student voice. Right? There's no debate there at all. Um, and, the, and the students going out and saying that they are really unhappy about something. And often student protests are a last resort when all the other student voice avenues are exhausted. It's also going to the press and students do go to the press if they're unhappy with something about their education. They go to their press and they complain about it and the press will publish it. There's lots of press stories around at the moment about mismanaged expectations in higher education. And there's also a more new phenomena in HE, which is um, social media. Social media has been around 15 years or so. But actually now we are at a time, but maybe 20 years ago, only the SU president had the ability to really shout that any student now can, if they're unhappy, they can just tweet about it. They can Instagram about it. They can Facebook about it. We all have several press release abilities now because of our own social media following. And that's really loud student voice as well. And we have particularly seen loud student voice during COVID-19 on social media. And we'll go to the next slide, please. So I'd like you to write in the chat bar now, everybody. Um, how are you gathering student voice right now in your roles? And what are they voicing their feedback about? So if you could all write in the chat bar, I've got it on my screen, I can see it okay. Just no right or wrong answer. So what, what kind of forums are you using to get student voice or, or um, where are students voicing their concerns or their feedback? And then what are they talking about as well? So WhatsApp a lot, WhatsApp group chats, yep. Class group chats, yeah, lots of WhatsApp, really the place to go for um, getting a community to speak together. Facebook groups, Messenger, also WhatsApp, Google Forms and WhatsApp. And then what are students talking about at the moment? What, what are they speaking about? What are they happy about? What they're not so happy about? What they're confused about? What, what are the big themes, everybody? Uh, and thank you, everyone. They're really tired, Rachel. I can really empathize with that. Deadlines piling up, assessments. Keep going, everybody, assessments. Lack of motivation, Zoom fatigue. Placement issues, thank you. Assignment work, though, lecturers not listening. Thank you, everybody. There's a lot going on and empathize with you all as student representatives. You have to take on that student, that load of all that feedback and try and communicate to the university. And you're, kind of, you're the front person of that feedback and that's difficult as well. And we'll go to the next slide as well, everybody. That's wonderful to have everybody. So what counts as student voice? Well, um, there's a really cool book that I would recommend anybody gets their hands on, especially the student union staff here, called The Student Voice Revolution. It's quite a big book, but it's got loads of visuals in there. And it's by Adam Fletcher. And Adam Fletcher speaks, um, writes in America, and he talks about student voice from kindergarten so nursery to some of us, right up until PhD. And he uses all the same lessons. Doesn't matter if you're a four-year-old or you're a 28-year-old or a 45-year-old, all the same lessons for student voice and how we listen to students. And he puts it really simply, student voice is an expression of any student in any form about learning, schools or education. And I love that definition, so simple. Uh, but he does say there's a difference between student voice activities, which is just students expressing their view, and meaningful student involvement or meaningful student voice. And he outlines these five steps where we have to acknowledge student voice. We have to be committed to listening and committed to doing something about it. We have to promote that we're passionate and we're keen and we're inviting a student voice. And we have to empower people. And actually we don't just have to empower students, but we actually have to empower staff as well. And we need to expand conversations. So lots of feedback there from our students present saying people are talking about they're just exhausted. Well, we don't just want to hear the word exhausted. We want to have say, OK, what's going on there? Let's have a conversation. What's what? How can we support more as universities and colleges? Or if you were saying we're concerned about the assignments, we want to expand those conversations. I welcome all student feedback, whether it's negative or positive, and I always expand it because I want to know what else is going on and what the group rate of reasons. You know, if you get a piece of student feedback saying, it's rubbish, it's really boring, 
that's not very useful. That's just as useful of, we love it. It's amazing. It doesn't tell you anything. So there's a great need to expand conversations and we'll nip to the next slide if that's okay, Yoshi. So when we talk about student complaints, this is from a UK context um, where the OIA is our complaints body. Um, how can students complain? Well, a student can complain a local informal complaint is maybe just having a chat with a lecturer and saying, look, I'm really not happy about something right now. Um, a local formal complaint is a written complaint. An institutional formal is maybe a complaint to the principal or to the vice chancellor or the complaints manager, depending on the size of your institution. And then the OIA in England is our complaints body. So that's how students can complain. But if you click to the next slide, please, and we'll click through student voice opportunities. We don't just want opportunities for our students to complain. We want to have open dialogue about education in the first place. So if we've got open dialogue, if our arms are open to student feedback, then hopefully we'll have a good conversation before any complaints arise. Beyond that point, we should have surveys that are picking up anything that's going on. We should be working with our student reps. Even more intensive after a local formal, we should be working with our students as partners on research projects for enhancement themes. We should have students engaged in quality assurance. And we should be working with our SU. So I see complaints are absolutely one form of student voice, but there's lots of other elements and lots of opportunities and we need a plethora of feedback opportunities in higher education. So we are listening all the time and we are doing something about that all the time. And we'll go to the next slide, please. But it's really important that our students are engaged in the development of education. And um, I see student engagement and student representation particularly as students and staff coming together to talk about education. And if you see my three images there that are published in uh, the book I recently published, um, a traditional higher education in regards to student voice is where staff and students aren't coming together. Now, when I go and speak to big groups of academics, which I do a lot, I'm doing it three weeks at a university, they often say, I feel like I'm bending over backwards for my students. I feel like I'm bending over backwards for their will. And that's the student as customer approach where students aren't meeting the staff halfway. Staff are doing all the meeting and students are sitting back saying, oh, we're the customers, we'll wait for you. But there's the other way, which is just as common as well. Students as campaigners or activists, where they're actually saying, we've tried voicing our concerns. We've tried sending emails. We've tried saying this at student rep meetings and it's not working. We are gonna protest. We are gonna shout about it on social media because staff aren't listening. The productive space, in my idealistic view, is students and staff come together and have conversations about education across the whole education journey. And we'll go to the next meeting um, and the next next slide there, please. And this is where student representatives are so, so important. And student representatives represent the absolute foundation of our student engagement activities. Um, you're often volunteers, you're supported by your SU, you get trainings and you maybe only meet three to four times a year, but you are the lead student voice in your cohort and your jobs are incredibly valuable to your university and they should be valued incredibly by your course teams. So we'll go to the next slide. And being a student representative is tough. And Alex Bowles, who is a former NUS um, uh, manager from the UK and also used to be a president of a student union in Southampton, wrote uh, an article in 2017 where he said, there's actually key characteristics that student representatives need to try and do. And it's quite tough to be get all of these right. But you need to be empathetic. You need to be mm -hmm. listening to people's views. You need to be listening to the staff's views about, you know, and being empathetic in those rooms. You need to have a partnership ethos that we're working on this together. You need to be involved in positive engagement, not just negative. So you need to be going in with a positive mindset. Um, you need to have an emphasis on the collective view. You need sometimes you need to be a bit extroverted. You need to be a bit confident. Not always. Um, you need to be a bit critical and analytical. Is that just one student saying that or is everyone thinking that? Or is, is that just one five students thinking that and not the other 200? And you need to emphasize conversations. So again, going back to those Adam Fletcher slides earlier on, we need to ensure that us as student representatives, that we are engaged in, um, in, in, in emphasizing having conversations, expanding conversations just as much as staff should be. We'll go to the next slide as well, please. And this was kind of easy, 
pre-COVID. So here's a nice picture of Imperial College London, where we had a fantastically busy campus. We would see a lot of our cohort, our fellow students, or our students that we taught a lot in our student unions, because our campuses would be packed. But if we go to the next slide, please, we are in a very challenging higher education because actually a lot of e-learning is going on and a lot of distance is between us and our students and between us and our fellow students. So what do we do in a HE sector where all our students are less visible? And perhaps is online student voice the only feedback we can get? And that's really challenging. And that's why, you know, I can hear you all saying, well, WhatsApp groups where I get my feedback from. So we'll go to the next slide. So it's not easy. We're in a HE um, where during COVID-19, where people are getting less campus interactions, less access to service, the opportunities have decreased. So there may be less sport and um, we can't do big forums in a room. Um, students' time on campus is limited. Maybe you can't go to the library as much, less face-to-face -face teaching, even if you've got any at all. Um, more online content. Students saying, actually, I don't want to go to campus because I don't want to go on public transport because maybe travel is not expected to be safe. But also we've got a lot of students who are maybe a bit confused that maybe this isn't the higher education they expected. And that's quite concerning for them. And therefore you as student reps are having to deal with that feedback and try and make the best of a very tough situation. And we'll go to the next slide as well, please. I know I'm running out of time, everybody as well. So there's lots of challenges being a student rep and there's lots of challenges going on. And I don't know, again, in the, in the chat bar quickly, if people just want to write, what challenges have you got as a student rep? Or what challenges are your fellow students facing right now? And do just write anything in. There's no right or wrong answer, everybody. And what challenges are you facing right now as a student rep? And I'll let you all type away. Thank you, Chloe. I hope you're okay. Keeping morale up. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you, Clara. As universities and colleges and education institutions and student unions, we need to recognize the great weight placed upon our student representative shoulders. And there's a lot of work and valuable work that they are doing to work with us as universities um, during this really tricky time. And um, thank you all for sharing there. I hope you're all well and hopefully today will be a boosting day, um, but it's good to know you're not alone as well. And we'll go to the next slide, Rasheen, please, if that's okay. So there's lots of challenges. There's challenges on you as student representatives of tuition fee, time, money. How do you access the jargon of the university? The power relationship of giving feedback to someone who is going to be marking your work and representing others' views. We've also got to remember there's a lot of challenges on staff. They didn't ask for COVID-19. Um, but tuition, those same tuition fees, time, power relationships as, as you, the student who often rates them, it can be tricky for them as well and they can feel quite outnumbered and how they translate that feedback and managing expectations during COVID-19 is almost impossible. And pressures from their own managers and accessing students is really, really tough. So there's challenges on both sides and it's, it's a tricky time. And hopefully after today, we'll be have lots to talk about that. And we'll go to the next slide, please. And it's also tricky because often we're entering into their world. We're entering into the boardroom, we're entering into the university world. And that can be very alienating. And there's a great paper from 2001 by Sarah Mann that talks about alienation. And actually our students, um, as student reps, we're often having to wrestle with jargon and processes and structures. And if we are SU officers, we're investing with even more of that. And that can lead us to have a sense of alienation, especially for anyone who's a non-traditional student. And next slide as well. But don't worry everybody because you're supported by your S student unions in this whole process. And here's some great bodies here that I've just got from Google. Um, student unions are epic. They are wonderful organizations that are here to support your student views. So I hope if you get anything out of today, it's knowing that please speak to your SU if you're in challenging situations. Um, and for you guys as SU officers, it's blooming hard as well. I've been a vice president of education myself and it's really hard. And you've got these national bodies to support you like the USI and NSTEP and please speak to one another that is what we must do more and more right now because we sometimes being a student representative is very lonely and but there's lots of us of us out there and just connecting ranting it off 
sharing ideas can be really valuable. And we'll go to the next slide, please. So there's loads of ways we can gain feedback. We can do feedback in person, but we can also do feedback online. And it's great you're using WhatsApp groups. And there's universities and student unions. You can use social medias, voting polls. You can use surveys. You can do suggestion boxes online. And we can also do a lot of research during this time. And I worry that there's not much research going on during COVID-19. But there's lots of student voice practices. But as I'm running low on time, I'll whiz on everybody to the next slide because um, I believe I'm drawing to an end. We can reimagine student voice and feedback for forms. In this time, we might have to reinvent the wheel. How do we get student feedback? But, and, but student feedback shouldn't stop. There's many departments like IT and estates that maybe don't get as much student feedback. And we need to make sure we're engaging students. And there's loads of ideas out there. And we can use software like Unitu to do that as well. Um, and the next slide as well, please. Um, and as I'll draw to a bit of a close. So to conclude, why focus on student engagement? Well, um, here's a book I recently published on the topic and um, please do check it out. I wrote that book for anyone to read, not for just super HE managers to read. Um, we need to engage students' voices. It's the missing perspectives. We need to have multiple pathways for feedback. It gives our students ownership in the community and it makes our staff see themselves as partners with students in their success. And of course, we can have increased student satisfaction, belonging, retention and engagement in the curriculum because of that. It offers an opportunity for students and staff to greater to understand one another as well. And really, I think it's about the continuous enhancement of education where we are all members in these communities, both learners and providers, and hopefully where everybody wins. So we've got um, on to the next slide. And remember why we are here. And I always find this really, really helpful when you're in a tricky conversation. It's saying, why are we here? Well, we're here because university is a place of knowledge production. We're here because we care about student learning and success. We're here because we care about amazing life experiences. We're here because we're about unlocking potential. And we're here because universities are all about thriving in the face of adversity. And there's a lot of adversity in the world right now. So we'll go to the next slide. So is there a need for student voice in higher education? Well, during COVID-19, oh, sorry, that's just said pre-COVID-19 on the left, there was a lot of reasons for student voice. During COVID-19, we're experiencing even more reasons. So distance learning, alienation, services online, perhaps the reshaping of the future university. So if you could just do one click for me, a greater need than ever before for student voice. Student voice should not go anywhere because we're all online. It needs to be louder and just as present as before. So the next slide, please. I, here's my MA in student engagement in higher education. If anyone's interested in our course that we run, and um, please do reach out. My email's on the end of these slides. This is a course for anyone who works in HE, as long as you engage students. And it was partly designed for student unions. So please do get in touch. And we had um, a few students from um, um, Ireland involved in the course um, in the last few years. So it'd be grand to hear from you. But just to round off the next slide, please, is just a real thank you for listening. It's great to be here today. I'm looking forward to engaging. And my main message is just stay connected and keep speaking up, even though it can be quite tiring sometimes. I'm happy for any of you to reach out to me, student or staff member. Um, my name's um, Tom um, and um, it, my email is simply tom.low at winchester.ac.uk. And it's been grand to speak with you. And that's the end of my short presentation. And I did